years. And uh, some of these uh, naked portraits might be more revealing than the uh, subjects might want them to be. Oh, gee, I just noticed this. Mark didn't use the, uh, the red eye stopper on his camera. Interesting points about Mark is that uh, I don't think he's ever really been considered as part of a movement. He's always been kind of a, an eccentric loner. And uh, if I was to uh, say that he's carrying on somebody's legacy, it would be somebody like uh, Ivan Albright. What do you think? Well, tell us how you know Mark. How do I know Mark? Um, I was working as a picture framer in the 80s and brought an entire show into the shop in a backpack. Wow. And I thought, this guy was cool. And he, he had one of the best shows I'd seen coming out of that backpack. Okay, James Sienna. Now, I understand that he actually is like... Uh, Reducing these features down in scale, they're not actually exactly uh, proportioned correctly. But he enlarges and diminishes. I don't know what you're referring to. <laughs> also, I was noticing that he didn't use a red light or a red eye uh, stopper on the camera there, so your eyes look a little bit like you're a vampire or something in there. Well, he, Mark doesn't uh, take great pride in his photographic ability, but he, the distortions that result from whatever accidents happen. So bad photographs make for great paintings. Bad photographs, I wouldn't call them bad, but there's a kind of honesty to an amateur photograph, right. a snapshot, that you don't necessarily get when a great photographer takes a picture. So what he's doing is he's accessing a kind of honesty in painting, using perhaps that device as part of it. Beautiful. No, I, Among the bravest. I first saw his paintings back in the early 80s at uh, Phyllis Kine Gallery. I think yeah. he had one painting in the gallery, and I walked up and looked at it for about a half an hour. Yeah. And then I had bad dreams for months afterwards. In other words, they were very effective. <laughs> yeah, thanks, James Sienna. <laughs> well, get up and look at some of the details. I understand this is all oil on linen, and I think the linen is mounted on board. Boy, that does not make you want to look at the back of your head too closely. I think one of the great things is that, uh, well, Mark is a uh, super realist. He's also getting into the uh, almost hallucinatory end of things, maybe surrealism. And that's kind of spooky head on the body of a dog. I would say this painting is probably something like uh, 18 by 36. These face studies are great. This is beautiful. Uh, this is one of Mark's drawings. I've never seen the drawings before. Oh, geez, he's a great draftsman. Oh, part of the notion of being a New York painter is that you paint big, but. Uh, any of these paintings that is much larger than uh, 30 by 36 inches and uh, Mark shows it <laughs> if you're serious and you get into it you can do extremely powerful paintings on a smaller scale oh gee there's Don Clemens hey there well we'll look at some of the pieces here in the very back gallery 
sharing a little piece. Some of these uh, portraits almost have a medieval quality. One of the masters, maybe a Van Eyck or a, one of the Dutch masters, Ter Bosch. It's great. It's also doing some wonderful things with the, with the blue light. Oh, her eyes are great. You know, there's a whole story that's sort of going on there. Just in the facial expressions. This is maybe one of the biggest pieces in this show. Now, <laughs> I wonder what Mark is doing with all in all of his spare time standing around naked with these uh, ladies in their uh, revealing negligees. This is some piece of modern architecture they're in, and uh, damn, I can almost recognize that uh, street scene behind them. That's some place in Manhattan, maybe on the west side. Beautiful detail. Oh. So anyways, we, Jack Pearson, <laughs> yeah, we go around and read the titles on his bookshelves. Mark is also a, uh, a master of uh, surfaces and textures. That chair, you can almost see the uh, woven fabric, see the shine on the glass top. Uh, brass base. Skin tones are great. Even his chest hair. Check out those wrinkles on his cheek. It's a tour de force. Where's the drawing? This looks like colored uh, ink on film. So maybe he's using this to uh, transfer the drawing onto the panel. And he's collaged in one of his little bizarro characters. Well, we finally caught up with Mark Greenwald. Congratulations, the show looks good. Um, <laughs> I was just wondering about some of these naked portraits. Yes. Did you have to uh, accentuate the uh, the proportions or is everything pretty accurate? Yeah, I get, you know. You're not going to tell us. I have my psychiatrist here. To, uh, no, no, I always exaggerate down. Oh. Quite frankly. It's, it's a natural kind of what? What do we call that? It's like, oh, I was going to say, objects in the mirror might be smaller that's than they right. appear, right, okay. Yeah. Why has my painting become about my penis? Except that's always about uh, my penis, isn't it? Um, and uh, so these, a metaphor. Th this goes back to 2007. How long does it take you to do one of your large, normal, large paintings? Well, the new painting, uh, my new, first New York painting, it yes. took me a year, at least uh, almost a year. So, uh, and it's just straight oil on linen mounted on wood? Always on linen on, on wood. Uh, but and more complicated often, and, and more uh, and more kinds of things going on with him. I'm taking more risks and changing. I see the kind of the hallucinatory things floating on people's faces and stuff like that. Yeah, doing it's that. It's a lot of fun. I'm having more fun. This getting, this getting old thing is great in terms of risk taking. Let me ask you this question. Do you see yourself carrying on any, any particular legacy of, uh, of painters? I was thinking of Ivan Albright, the famous Chicago yeah, never, super realist. I never loved Albright, although I loved, uh, I loved the Portrait of Dorian Gray yes. movie, and I loved the uh, Wild Book. I never loved Albright's painting. I loved the idea of Albright. But I think of myself more like Richard Dad, you know, like, ah. like the guy who killed his father and was in a mental institution for the last 40 years of his life and painted fairy color. It's master.
right. You know, those are, and, and those kinds of painters. Vermeer, you know, good painters. Absolutely. I was saying that I could see almost some uh, Van Eyck and uh, some of those things the coming through. I love I love Siennese painters. I love well, it's, it's great to get a chance to see you here on the big stage in New York and to get a chance to see a, a nice selection of painters. Congratulations. It's fabulous. Thank you so much. Way to go, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. This is James Cumm reporting on Mark Greenvold's Murder in the World. Paintings from 2007 to 2013. It's Brony Westwater on the Bowery. Thank you, Kate. Oh, that was sweet. Thank you.